Musicians need one thing to be commercially successful, their fans. And not your typical casual fan, but a dedicated group of people that follows their every move, their core audience, or the ride or dies. Since the late 2010s, many Gen Z artists emerge onto the scene, but sadly a lot of them are struggling to carry the torch set ablaze by artists that debuted in the 90s to the early 2010s. But that changed with Gen Z pop star Billie Eilish, who has managed to carve a lane for herself, causing her star to rise, moved past the casual fan stage to gaining a core slash dedicated audience. For this video, let's talk about Billie Eilish, the leader of Gen Z in pop music, why it's important for artists to never give the crowd exactly what they want, and how Billie Eilish built up her audience to only abandon them in the end, and how that ended up being a good thing. Billie Eilish is the most influential and important artist out right now, She's a top of the music chain and got there because of her memorable image and unique sound. All the good girls go to hell. Cause even got herself. I seduce your dad type. I'm the bad guy. Maybe it's in the gutter. She was born Billie Eilish Pirate Beard O'Connell in Los Angeles, California. Fun fact, Billie Eilish was conceived via in vitro fertilization. While growing up in Hollywood, Billie and her older brother Phineas, who also produces and writes with her, were homeschooled because their parents wanted them to have the freedom to pursue their interests and to have more time with their kids. They lived in a home teeming with music. Both parents, Maggie Beard and Patrick O'Connell, were actors, but they didn't get major or defining roles in a commercial or acclaimed sense. Some people like to call Billie a nepo baby because of this, but I don't think she qualifies as one. Is there anything wrong with being a nepo baby? Now, in my opinion, there is nothing wrong with nepotism. Nepotism is only bad when the nepo babies aren't nepoing. It's a self-preservation thing, i.e. keeping a certain skill set or wealth in the family, and it's also smart. This doesn't only happen in Hollywood, but in all industries. People in positions of power, in most cases, will hire only who they already know, like, and trust. Kind of harsh, but it's the truth. Where was that? As a kid, Billie Eilish loved watching TV series like Psych and making homemade music videos and homemade movies. Dancing also used to be her thing, but she dropped out after an injury. Phineas and Billy's parents would prioritize and facilitate their children's development. They lived in a two-bedroom house, so they gave up both rooms to Billy and Phineas while they slept on the couch. We have like a two-bedroom house and there's four people. Instead of making me and Billy share a room growing up, our parents just sleep on a futon in the living room. One of the first songs Billy put out was posted on her SoundCloud eight years ago, a track titled Fingers Crossed. But it was the alluring track, Ocean Eyes, originally released on November 18, 2015, that would get the world's attention. The track was uploaded to SoundCloud, so her dance teacher would be able to download the track for choreography. So the track was released for Billy's dance class. Two weeks later, the track received several hundred thousand listens. Needless to say, Ocean Eyes blew up on the platform, sparking interest from Phineas' manager who thought Billie Eilish could really benefit if she pursued singing with Phineas as her producer. This led to Billy being signed to Platoon, an A&R and music distribution company by Apple Music a deal arranged by her brother and his manager. Justin Lubliner, CEO of Darkroom, got in contact with Billie Eilish after originally noticing her from Ocean Eyes in 2015. He signed Eilish to a joint deal with Darkroom and Interscope Records as quickly as possible. Singles Ocean Eyes and Six Feet Under were re-released that same year. Justin introduced her with a distinctive attitude and aesthetic taking inspiration from Travis Scott, not only relying on her music to push her, but her image.
Mark Ruman Interscope Records dropped Billy's debut EP, Don't Smile At Me, in 2017. With a runtime of 26 minutes, Don't Smile At Me solidified Billy as a risk taker and an artist who will dominate for years to come. Billy told fashion website outlet S Sense. My EP is called Don't Smile At Me for a lot of reasons, but one of them would be when someone tells you, smile, why aren't you smiling? It's so much more beautiful when you smile. Everyone's taught to smile. Girls are like, look happy. Look like you're having fun. I'm not gonna look like anybody except what I am. I want to impress myself. Don't Smile At Me is shrouded in dark, sinister, sad, and playful tones. In terms of dark sounds, songs like Copycat, Hostage, and My Boy. What I'm getting at is, this became Billy's sound, her signature. Now I got a belly ache. Billy descended further into the rabbit hole of dark pop and industrial sounds with her debut studio album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? When we all fall asleep, where do we go? Come here. You should see me in a crown. You should see me in a crown. I'm gonna run this nothing to the lead single off the project. The track's title was inspired by a scene from the third episode of the second season of BBC's television series Sherlock's. The man with the key is king, and honey, you should see me in a crown. Riddled with harsh and extravagant sounds, a risky approach for a first single. The track is about strategy, borderline obsession, as one makes their way to that gratification that leads to that crown. Bide my tongue, bide my time, wearing a warning sign, wait till the world is mine. Then they slowed it down for the second single, the daunting but comforting when the party is over. I can lie, say I like it like that, like it like that. And in the video, she drank a cup of black liquid, then cried it out. Other songs off the album like Bury Your Friend, Bad Guy, and All the Good Girls Go to Hell. To Cooked up Billy's sound, dark pop, and conveyed it really well. Changing pop music forever. The tracks on the album composes heavy amplified synthetic bass and heavy digitized ad-libs, giving the project character and its own quirks. I have taken out, I have my, Invisalign. Taken out I was... my Invisalign and this is the album. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget that ending of Bad Guy. <laughs> when We All Fall Asleep Where Do We Go made Billy the leader of the dark pop sound and it dubbed her the ASMR queen. But when the world needed her the most, she vanished. I mean, and just as Billy and Phineas perfected their signature sound, they abandoned it, along with the audience that wanted it the most. She vanished. Happier Than Ever, Billy's sophomore studio album, released in 2021, was a drastic change from the sound cultivated on her debut, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Firstly, she changed her image. She went from having dark hair to blonde, which I don't really care for, but that kind of put a wedge between her and the audience for some reason. Now, of course, there was still that Billy type beat on this album, but it was watered down as they were moving away from her signature. They included jazz and alternative sounds from the 90s and 2000s on Happier Than Ever. Happier Than Ever is definitely Billy's flop era. The album is yet to be certified gold in the US. Meanwhile, her debut sold 4 million copies in the US. The album was acclaimed, but it didn't get half the awards like her debut. Example, her debut won multiple Grammy Awards, while her sophomore Happier Than Ever didn't. Now, I do like Happier Than Ever, but even now, it's not an album I've revisited until now me making this video. It's just not that type of album. And during this era, my thoughts were they were changing too fast, and the rollout didn't help either. It was just really confusing. I did review the album on my channel, and although I did praise the project, it's also a perfect example of just because something is good doesn't mean it's noteworthy. 
much as Happier Than Ever was coming from this place of like, we're so good, we can, you know, this yeah. sounds so good, we are so good. Yeah. It was also, at least for me, like, a, 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 um, not knowing at all who I was or who I, I was. Identity Crisis be. album. Leading up to the release of Hit Me Hard and Soft, her third studio release, Billy did not release any singles to support the project, only snippets. In my Happier Than Ever video, I stated that I wish they didn't release any singles because it made me only question if the album would be good. Collectively, listening the album from start to finish, it made so much more sense. I think they shouldn't have released any singles leading up to the album or release only one single then release the album because the singles only let me doubt whether or not the album is going to be good and I don't know if that was their plan but I don't like that. And this is the reason why she didn't release any singles. So why did you decide to release all 10 songs at once and not like tease everyone with a song here and there? Sure. Um, I just like hate when it's taken out of context and I feel like every time I've put a single out it doesn't do what I want it to do. Like it just, without the family like surrounding it, it just feels wrong and weird and I feel like as a listener I feel the same I like fall victim to that as a fan like people put out a single and I'm kind of like oh okay and then they put the album out and I'm like okay this makes much more sense like I get it now right. and I think that um I don't know I just also I really like when I get to listen to an album and all of the music is new I don't want to like press play and then like the third song is something I've heard and then the sixth mm -hmm. song is something I've heard it's like it feels like a new album but really it's like five new songs you know so right. I just like it's like one whole piece you know what I'm saying yes when you instead opt in to market the album with snippets and previews, it was also done in a subconscious way, like how songs were used in the Fortnite festival and being featured in a promotional clip for the third season of Netflix series, Heartstopper. On my initial listen, I did not like this album, and I resented it even more than happier than ever. It sounded like garage music or a demo. It sounded like a huge downgrade, and not in a good way. And listening to the album initially made me compare Billie Eilish to every other soft singers like Clario or Pink Pantheris. Nothing's wrong with those artists, by the way. But I was initially disappointed with the sound because it felt like Billie had her own thing going on for her to now follow other people. Initially, I thought it was very regressive and sounded like she was a guest on her own album. This album has a lot of acoustics and it really threw me off. I started to really listen to Billie Eilish since her EP was released in 2017, and by the time her debut studio album came out, it came just in time when I was going through a very hard time in my life. And that album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, really got me through it. And after that, I kind of started to rely on Billie to keep that up, keep that going for maybe two more albums, that signature dark pop sound. But she didn't and I felt like I was abandoned by one of my favorite artists. Then, while being frustrated, I decided to turn it off and revisit the album Hit Me Hard and Soft another day with a new set of ears that was being carried by ants on the floor. And in that moment, I realized that I was wrong about this album. Hit Me Hard and Soft at the same goddamn time is one of the best albums I've listened to in a while. The album takes you on a journey of love, friendship, betrayal, and self-discovery, packaged in a concise 10-track project. In an interview with Apple Music, the singer stated that she was finally honest with herself on this project, and during some vocal takes, she had to do it alone because of how vulnerable she felt, and she couldn't do certain parts with Phineas in the studio. Album. And yeah, what's yeah. interesting is that Hit Me Hard and Soft is almost the reverse of that, where we were making it, and it was like, you know, we were kind of like this the whole time, like, I don't know if we're making anything good. Like, this might be terrible. Right. And then now when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, but I'm comfortable in who I am now. And I feel like I know who I am now. I think that this album is like the biggest uh, example of, or not example, but I think this is like the most me thing that I've ever made. And I think that it's so purely me and not any sort of character really. Which was hard to do. Sound wise, Happier Than Ever was Billy and Phineas testing the waters and being very safe. While on Hit Me Hard and Soft, they ditched all the precautions and dived right in with no safety net. The opener is a beautiful ballad titled Skinny. Just because I got skinny. A song about the singer's insecurities. People say I look happy. 
just because I got skinny. But the old me is still me and maybe the real me. And I think she's pretty. In the song, she falls in love with a friend and reflects on her relationship with fame, questioning herself if she's already experienced all her glory. Am I already on the way Which connects us back to her 2021 album, Happier Than Ever. Billy even acknowledged this conversation on her TikTok. Lunch. I could eat that girl for lunch. Yeah, she the boldest track on the album, Billie explores her sexuality like she's never did on a track before. And she made it clear she wants to stick her face in a wet vagina. On Chihiro, a reference to the Chihiro character from Studio Ghibli's 2001 Oscar Award winning film, Spurred It Away. In the film, Chihiro faces her fears by appreciating life, meeting it head on. On the song, Billy sings on a lo-fi techno soft beat that progresses into an intense rave, taking us on a journey in line with the film's concept. Yo, can we talk about how smooth the techno essence is? Like, you can dance to this. Vogue if you want, maybe. Crip walk, maybe. Go pan your head top. It's up to you. There are other songs on here that I felt like Billy and Phineas took inspirations from other artists. Birds of a Feather, probably the best song on the album. The production reminds me of Sky Ferreira's Everything Is Embarrassing, just a beautiful song. And on Blue, the final track, that out of body James Blake-esque second part transition titled Born Blue had me weeping. The orchestra really fucked me up. And also on The Greatest, the outro or the bridge, that part reminds me of Paramore. I really love a deep retrospective song which brings us to Bittersweet, which also has a part two. And I don't know whose idea it was to add that menacing, sinister beat switch at the end of Bittersweet. I know it's either between Billy or Phineas, and if y'all are watching this, they probably aren't, but if they are, I'ma do y'all the same way y'all did me when I see you. Got my heart falling out of my chest. I want that. I want to be a different person than I am now. I am living in this moment, but I'm just not afraid of change. I want to evolve. I want to create new parts of myself, shed them, and then create something new. I just don't want to be protected from failing because I don't give a fuck about messing up. Fame is irrelevant. I'm not your baby. I don't want to make money if it means being someone I don't want to be. I'm not scared to walk away from something if it isn't who I want to be. The only thing that doesn't change about me is the fact that I'm gonna change. There is two types of artists, one who does what they want to do, even when they are filled with fear, and one that gives the crowd what the crowd wants, slowly becoming a slave to their audience. And this could have been the story of Billie Eilish, but no, Billie did the unthinkable not once, but twice, further abandoning the pop blueprint we've seen worked for countless major artists before. She shed the facade, a Billie Eilish that did not exist from the start, and showed us who she really is, giving us glimpse with her guitar songs EP and What Was I Made For. That's the job of an artist, to tell the truth, and when the audience tells them what to do, they push back. That's the story of Billie Eilish so far. The artist who abandoned her sound, abandoning her audience when the odds were not in her favor, and it paid off. I got a belly ache. 